Hi, so in today's clip, we are joined with Stephen Emner Sabanim of the US Mudukwan. Thank you so much, sir, for joining. In relation to mind training, which is Shimgang, how you have interpreted slash actioned each of the five levels and reflect on some key insights. First, thank you for this opportunity to be part of this historic event. And I'm very honored and humbled to be able to be part of this. So it's interesting that you pose that question because uh, with the passing of my Sabon this past January, after my Kodanja experience from my Childan, in 2014. But six months after that, we started discussing this quite in depth. Um, this is the direction he was leading me based on his study of the tool hawk. And that's where he had been in the last several years. And so there's five levels about the mind training aspect. In the five levels, the first three are pretty familiar to most practitioners. So the very first one is understanding Do, Subak and Do. And that in itself changes. The dough you start with as a practitioner is one mindset. Uh, generally, it's physical or something you want to overcome or overcoming fears or things of that nature. As you progress through your training, your dough changes because your age and life experiences change. As we get older, that constantly evolves because our life changes and we adapt differently. The way we train then, the way we train now, what our goals are, are different. In the beginning, it's very external. As you understand the art more, it becomes way, way more internal. So that's the first step of the five. The second step is experience. And you can only get that through years of training and through years of hardship. Because when we're faced with hardship, just as the Muda Kwan was and the founder was, there's times that we understand more about ourselves and learn how to overcome those based on our surroundings, the areas we live in, the times and place associated with that dough, it evolves. But it's only through that that you can experience it you find out the depth of your internal self. I had had several injuries over the years and two happened just before two different kodanjas and I had to make decisions on whether I was gonna attend, but I decided that it was more important to attend and do the best I absolutely could at that time because things were gonna change. And I found out a lot about myself during that time and, uh, and my passion really for the art. The third part of that five is really where you start to get introspection. And that's through practice of meditation. The saying about being still and listening to what's around us rather than what we want to come to us as opposed to what's really there. And that takes letting go totally of the ego. So for practitioners coming up through the levels, uh, more and more you'll find that you'll carry the art with you daily. And everything you see around you is somehow affected how you perceive the art's concepts intertwined with your own beliefs in the environment you are in, it creates this harmony. And for me, I find that really the, the real core golden part of the art. Let's see, the fourth phase is uh, developing and understanding your key, your energy. We have a tendency sometimes to want to use too much muscle as opposed to allowing it naturally in our energy to unfold. So in the last, I'd say 10 years, I really devoted most of my, a lot of my training, probably 50% to Mupal Dangkum training, Qigong training, meditation and really enhance that side so it was balanced out with the physical side and i do a lot now with key i'm daily through my youngs regular youngs pace maybe differently with a different focus on breathing which sabin and hanky and i had great discussions about as far as circulation breathing and the unification of movements but not physical movements allowing the energy to be directed and that's really what this is about finding your energy and how it associates with everything around you and we learn how to become part of it as its natural progression based on the laws of nature. The last phase, and that involves greater times of meditation. It allows of giving up of oneself and belongings. In other words, finding out what's really essential, what's not essential in our life. And when we let go of those things, there's a freedom involved with that. And awareness that opens up to the real beauty of what life is about. That kind of goes in later, I think the, the term is uh, sundo, where you start to understand what the founder was talking about. That's where I'm at. I mean, I do some fasting and I find when I eat less, even though I'm a great cook and I love to cook, don't get me wrong, I still find that I have a better edge to things that are around me. I work better. I train better. Enough to sustain the body and the, and the energy you need, obviously, and maintain health, but yet not overdoing it where it takes away from allowing you not to do those things. Do all of these, I feel like a white belt with, and that's okay. Because I think that's the goal in mind is we return to where we started and leave behind the things that weren't necessary 
and become that pure living art, as the founder always said, we are the art and it's reflected through us to other people and humanity. And I think that's vital in the times that we've been facing and through this historic time globally. I've learned a lot through that. There's great lessons in this time about finding your own personal discipline uh, as opposed to a set routine. And that I think is where I found really a lot of joy and allowing myself, I have all this free time. I can explore more about those things. So I think to sum it, I guess it's that stillness in motion, motion and stillness that it talks about the Sip Sound Say. The beauty is in the stillness. And then we take action through that to return to the stillness. And that's where the beauty lies to me, at least. Thank you so much, sir. That's been really, really interesting and really insightful. Thank you. It was a pleasure.